Hello, this is a prepaid call from Peewee. An inmate at North Carolina Correctional Facility. I never felt like I had anything to live for, man. I never felt like my life was worth shit, you know? When they arrested us, I remember, I just don't give a fuck. Didn't care what happened to me. I think I knew my life was over, but I just didn't care. And it didn't matter. Let's put that right there. Yeah, this was a September 23rd, 1992. And uh, the, the victims, Jonathan Rhodes, Jennifer Lynch. It's a double homicide. Well, John was my cousin. He was more like my little brother. You couldn't ask for nobody better to help you working on machinery or helping with the cattle. He just knowed what to do, and if he didn't know what to do, you didn't have to tell him but one time. And Jenny, she was just as sweet as she could be. She was his girlfriend from high school. And he, I don't think he ever had another boyfriend or girlfriend. That evening, I went over there, or I was going over there because we'd play cards at night and then watch Jay Leno. So he went to bed and then I'd go on home. That evening, or that night, when I was driving up the driveway, I could see the car door on his Maverick was standing open and the car was running. And as I got up close to the house, I could see the door was standing open on the house. Well, that didn't look right to me. So I jumped out of the truck and started kind of trotting across the yard. And when I got about halfway up, I noticed Jenny laying in the yard, and as I run over to her, biggest part of her head was gone, no face left on her. At that moment, I was more afraid and terrified than I've ever been in my life. And I run back up to the house, and as I come through the front door, John's laying there dead, and I didn't know what was going on. I, I kind of looked around, but I was afraid that there was somebody maybe still there want to kill me too. So I run over to the phone and called the police and told them that John and Jenny was dead. And it just crushed me. I arrived at, at the murder scene. I was one of the first people there. And Jennifer Lynch was uh, dead in the yard, and I did put a, uh, a sheet over her. This is something you have to do sometimes. And my initial impression was that it had been a, uh, a burglary that had gone wrong. That, uh, and this happens a lot, that uh, people will come home, somebody's broken in their house, they confront them. Uh, but it looked like Perpetrators got to jump on him and killed him, shot him. Davy and Pee Wee. They wasn't ever nice. Hell, they were my family. And they just stole and robbed and took drugs and stayed drunk all the time. But never did I think in a million years they would have killed John and Jenny. But when the police told me there was some guns been stolen too, it made me think differently because that was what kind of stuff Davey would do. Not only that, I mean, you talk about the world's dumbest criminals, these guys had left their fingerprints on them. And uh, we were able to connect the prints to them and uh, that, was, uh, that was what really broke the case right there. We had Mark Coleman and uh, Davey Coleman arrested 
and uh, charged with uh, first degree murder. Capital. They was just kind of fellas you just know didn't have much of a future. But John wasn't like them. He was trying to make a life for himself, and Jenny was just as sweet a person as you'd ever want to meet. They were just good people. The totally opposites of what Davey and Pee Wee were. It's common in a case like this to accept a plea deal when the evidence against you is overwhelmingly strong. And neither David nor Pee Wee had a, an alibi for the night of the murder. Pee Wee's name was on a bill of sales at the pawn shop on the afternoon following the murder. Their mother's car was parked near the scene of the crime on the night of the murder. And most importantly, they were identified as having sold or traded the murder weapons. So they, they took a plea deal, and not a very good one. Davy was actually killed in prison about six months after he'd been there now, you know, he was strangled to death. Mark, on the other hand, uh, my understanding, he's up for parole. We definitely shouldn't get parole because well, he's a murderer, and I just don't think that he should be getting out. After what they done, I can't forgive him. It was just senseless. And even though I try to remember like the good times with him, I can't forget them dead being laid out like that. How do you think it's going to go? It's difficult to say. Um, he has kept working and he's been a model inmate, but he is guilty of committing two murders. I know there's a lot of people that are real glad I'm not getting out of here. I can't say I blame them. I never would have gone there with Davy that night if I'd have known what was going to happen. I don't deny any of it. It's just, it's not that easy for me to talk about. I know what I did hurt a lot of people. Some of them are probably going to hurt for the rest of their lives, and I'm sorry for that. I'm real sorry for that.